Hello and welcome to OK at Home DIY. If you are new here, my name is Zena. I like to do DIYs using thrifted items, things I buy from Dollar Tree, and even stuff that you would throw away, I give a new life to. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing just by hitting that subscription button and then clicking the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a video. In today's video, I am participating in the Look for Less Challenge. This is hosted by Yami at the Latina Next Door. And her co-host this month is Lisa Burningham. Both of the links to their channels will be in my description box below, as well as the link to the playlist. It is so much fun going over to the playlist and seeing what everyone made for less money at home. I am excited to share with you what I made in my look for less. This was actually introduced to me a couple months ago when a friend texted me a picture of the first DIY I will show you. And in it said, she said, this looks like something you would make on your channel. And she was absolutely right. I fell in love with it and my brain went to working on solving the problem on how to make this look for less. I hope you enjoy, so let's get into it. Here's the inspiration piece that my friend texted me. There was one problem with this shelf is it worked with metal. So I decided to replace the metal with some leather. So here I'm starting out with just sharing with you. I cut these two pieces. These are some scrap wood. They were seven inches long. And then this piece of wood is nine by seven and a half. Because of the inspirational piece, the measurement was nine by seven and a half that it's um, the dimensions. And then it was 21 inches long. So I'm replacing the metal with this faux leather. This was upholstery leather and I took this off of a ottoman that I am redoing. And uh, this is exactly the material I wanted to use. Now, a lot of my pricing that I'm gonna show you how I made this was because I had a lot of this stuff around my house. So I did go on to Google and I just went to see how much faux leather was at Hobby Lobby. And you can get a reel of a 24 by eight inch faux leather for like $5.99. So my leather was free, so I'm not even including this in my um, price. So I started out by cutting 44 inches. Now the inspirational piece, like I said again, was 21 inches long, but I thought it would be easier for me to be working with rounded a more rounded number. So I went up to 44 inches. That means that made it 22 inches long. Um, that was just my thinking. The whole piece is 21 inches long. So you know, maybe my strap should have been shorter to more mimic the piece, but this is just what I did. Um, so I'm taking my yardstick and I want it the width of the yardstick. The yardstick is one inch. And so that's the width I wanted. And I'm going to do a trifold on this leather. I wanted the leather to be strong enough to hold the shelf and anything I wanted to put on that shelf. So that's why I'm doing the trifold. Also, you just saw me using my scissors to try to straighten out one end because this is a trifold. One will be folded over and kind of shown. So I wanted that to be a super straight edge. Now what I'm doing here is I'm folding my leather first. This is kind of a very tough leather. It's, um, like I said, it was upholstery leather. And so I wanted to kind of get a crease in this before I even started to hot glue it down. That way I can make sure I was hot gluing more on my line than, you know, just gluing a random place down. It really did make it a whole lot easier to work with this leather once I folded it first and then I hot glued it down and I made my way to working my way to the other end. Now, I actually am gonna back up for just a second and say these are gonna be the straps that are on the outside of the tear uh, drop or the tear shaped shelf. 
in the original it's actually metal and I do not have any experience working with metal I actually looked around for some metal that I could maybe mold and work with um, so this is what I came up with to replace the metal with leather straps so this is what we're making are the leather straps now this last fold I prepped it the same way I folded it over and got a little crease where my line was and then I go ahead and just fold this last one I'm making sure I don't really want the hot glue to like um, come out on the edge onto the leather but it's okay if it does I also made this last fold the same width as the um, ruler as my yardstick the yardstick is actually an inch and a half almost an inch and a half so I um, I'm using that as a template for size and width to keep everything kind of the same size and you know as straight as can be so this last fold is that same width of an inch and a half that way it goes all the way over and kind of I'm trying to hide the fact that it's a fold you know what I mean and see if it will blend in um, a little bit better and then I go back in just tacking down the edge maybe that's popping up and if the hot glue does come out onto this leather I just let it dry and I rub it away it really is easy to get off but I just kind of wanted to avoid that step for time's sake um, after I get my leather straps done now I have two of these that are 44 inches long I just um, even out the very ends there and making sure everything's even and then I take and what I'm going to do is I want my end holes to be a quarter of an inch in from the end so I just measure a quarter of an inch in I do that on both ends and then I make sure it's in the center so I flip my strap around and I line it up with the ruler and I find the center of the strap this is 22 inches long when it's folded in half I went and put it up against the ruler and marked it at the 22 inch mark I'm using a silver marker and I'll show you a way I cover this up in the end these marks are for my pilot holes I like to make all my marks and all my measurement my pilot holes before I even try to put my project together um, or before I even paint so I make the marks at the end a quarter inch in and then I mark my middle point at 22 inches here I'm making sure my dot is in the center of the strap and then I move on to trying to figure out how I am going to actually you know place the shelf to hang these small thin straps of our pieces of wood are actually one inch by a quarter of an inch and I am going to put them onto the straps first and then place the shelf on top of them as like brackets almost so here I was trying to figure out how can I where do I place the the brackets so my shelf can go on top of that and there's the teardrop shape on the bottom so I decided that I'm going to have to rip open my straps here and place inside the straps something that will hold a round shape some kind of metal piece that's that or something that would hold me, uh, a round shape so I go ahead and undo my straps just in the center the middle point there it's about a foot in the middle there and I fold over a piece of a cookie sheet that I purchased from Dollar Tree and I fold it over so it's kind of double thick and I cut it the width of my strap and I insert it in the middle so both of my flaps are now ripped open and I'm inserting the metal piece in the bottom there after I have it in there where I want it I just go ahead and I hot glue this down of course this step you want to do at the beginning but I didn't think of that until I had you know halfway through the project so just a little word to the wise if you do this go ahead and glue some of this cookie sheet in the middle so it can hold the teardrop round shape here I'm making the dots for my pilot holes um, 
to put my brackets on the straps. So I made a dot at the 16 inch mark and a dot at the 28 inch mark. I'm coming out from the center six inches on both sides. This I will make my pilot holes and add the brackets to the strap. Next I'm showing you, this is a round rolling pin I purchased at Dollar Tree. I'm cutting it down to eight inches long and then I will put my straps about an inch in on each side. Here are I'm showing you how I'm molding them and then I'm getting rid of any of my silver dots with a furniture marker. And that takes that dot right on off of there and you can mold these into a teardrop shape. Well, I was trying to figure out how I could put these onto my round rolling pin and I had to go out and cut a piece of wood an inch by an inch. That I am going to attach to my rolling pin here and this is what I'm going to attach my straps to, to make the teardrop shape shelf. And again, this one is actually the one by one inch kind of dowel that I cut is seven inches long. I just drill the holes in about a centimeter and then I attach it to my now round dowel that used to be a rolling pin from Dollar Tree and I'm making sure that they are um, the same width on each end. Next I want to show you how I shaped the hardware to hang the whole piece from the wall. I took a cup hook and here I'm just going to show you that I'm going to use a drill bit the same width of the cup hook. And since the cup hook actually comes in a hook, not in a round eyelet, I went ahead and used my pliers and just squeezed that shut so that my black S hook there can hook through the top so it becomes an eyelet. Next, I just put a pilot hole in the center and then I will drill or mark for my pilot hole that I will drill out at four inches there. I move on to painting the one by one inch dowel with soft black from Americana. This is more of a dark brown black and I really liked this. It really matched my leather color well. I move on to staining my wood pieces with antique uh, wax in Waverly. I actually diluted it down so I can um, get just a real thin light coat and I go ahead and do all the rest of the pieces in that wax as well. Now I'm attaching the brackets to my straps here. I already have a pilot hole there. I just take and drill my pilot hole, my screw right on into my pilot hole to attach the brackets. I do that for both of the straps. Here I did, I do kind of wish I measured on my bracket exactly where I wanted the pilot hole to go in or the screw to go in. Um, here I actually got off a little bit so when I hung it up it wasn't exactly even and I just will show you how I remedied that in a little bit. So now it's just attaching this to that round top piece. I go ahead and just use some screws. The screws I'm using are actually um, a half inch screw. These screws are actually something I salvaged off of a chair. So I'm kind of one of those. I like to salvage hardware before I throw things away. Um, again, I use the screws and I just attach my, my straps to the round top part here. And I do that for all four ends. Then I attach the hanging hardware, the cup hook I bent for an eyelet and painted that black with uh, chalk paint and then the black as hook from a Dollar Tree hanging planter. Placed my shelf in there and I really liked how everything was coming so far. The metal made it bend but I didn't like how the ends were showing like that so I went ahead and made one last um, Final detail, I cut these craft sticks down to seven inches long, painted them with that soft black because that really matched my color of my leather really well, and just capped off those ends. Finished it off with a vase from Dollar Tree and a plant hanger coming from the wall. I got mine at Basket Market. really 
liked how this turned out. I really enjoy it. And I enjoyed the process of figuring out how to make it at home. My cost was around $10. A lot of this I had at home. The wood, the leather, the stain. And of course I used a miter saw to cut things down and a drill to make the holes. So my cost was $10 and the original price was $59.99. So I saved around $50. Inspiration for DIY number two are these wall sconces from Interior Delights. I'm taking two Dollar Tree vases. I'm taking two planks that I cut down. Two rings that I made. I will show you that as well. L brackets that are three inches long. Two of these rounds from Dollar Tree. And two of these craft sticks I cut down to the length of the vases. To make the metal rings, I used a cookie sheet from Dollar Tree. You get two for a dollar. And this craft stick that was one eighth inch by two, a half an inch. So it's half an inch wide is what I was really using it for. I took it and I placed it in the middle of my piece of cookie sheet here, wide enough to do a tri-fold and I just fold one side down the next side I try to make sure I am having that uh, edge right along the edge of my guide here and it kind of got a little wonky so I flip it around and make sure that end has the half an inch width guide and I just fold up the cookie sheet to make kind of a crease so where I where I want to to fold it back over and then I want the length of that fold to be or the width of the fold to be a half an inch so I just scored it and then now I'm cutting it along cutting along that line when I'm done cutting I'll just fold that back over the width of my metal piece should be similar to the size of my guide here it's a half an inch I do that just so my lines are straight and I get my width that I am going for. Trim off the ends and then I take my Dollar Tree vase and I take my middle piece and I just shape I just shape my middle piece around my vase trying to kind of hold it tight and then bending it as I go. This seems to work really well. You don't get any creases that way if you just hold it really tight and then kind of drag your thumb along and bend it around the vase. This is going to form the metal ring that's at top of the sconce and all I did was kind of loosen it up a little bit, pinched it off with my, my thumb there where I thought I can easily move the vase in and out on its own and then I just take a permanent marker and I'll mark the inside where the inside flap ends. Once I mark it there, then I know that uh, that's where I'll put my hot glue and that's the size of the ring I want. Next, I am just marking out where I want to put the hanger in the back. But real quick, I want to talk about the dimensions of these two planks. They're 23 inches long and the width of them is five and a half, which is actually a one by six from the store. Um, so after I mark where I would like to have the hangers in the back, I just go ahead and take the hangers themselves. I find the center and then I put the center of the hanger over that. I butt it up against that line and then I put my two pilot hole markings there. That way I can get them on the board that level and even. Next I'm showing you, I'm going to mark up the... I'm going to place the wall sconce L bracket there four inches up from the bottom. And again, I find the center and I place the L bracket on that, trying to place the, the little holes in the L bracket over the center. And here I'm just double checking that they end up right in the center. I do that for both um, wood planks here. 
I measure four inches up and then I find the center. I place the L bracket on the center. And what I'm trying to do is I, I kind of estimated where the L bracket holes might land. I lined them up with those dots and then I drew circles. And then I went back over the circle into the center of the circle and then put another dot to the center of the board. Um, I did two uh, holes on the bottom and one hole on the top. All the rest of that stuff I'm going to take out and paint black. And these two planks I am going to stain with the antique wax that has been watered down. I stain them front and back. But of course I will do the staining after I do my pilot holes. I like to drill my pilot holes first, do all my measurements first, and then I go out and paint. So when everything is all dry, all I have to do is assemble and I don't have to worry about scratching the paint so much. I don't show it here, but I do put another pilot hole up a little ways the length of the craft stick, which is the length of the vase. So I'm starting off just assembling. I took everything out, the rounds, the L brackets, the craft sticks, and the rings that I made and painted them all black. I actually used for the craft stick and the round here, I used the chalk paint, chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. It actually has like a shinier finish. Okay, so I spray painted the L bracket and the metal rings with satin paint, uh, Canon Black in Rust-Oleum. Now I'm going to go ahead and just assemble everything. I filled the hole in those rounds with hot glue so then a screw would be able to stick to something. I am going to place the screws in the craft stick first and then I'm going to align them with the L bracket. Once I have everything aligned with the L bracket, I go ahead and attach the round to the L bracket. And I lined up the hole in the L bracket with the hole in the round and um, that hot glue. And my screw was thick enough to kind of, um, to be able to keep it in place very sturdily. Now I go ahead and uh, drill in my rest of my screws here and in the top ring at the top of the craft stick and that's how I assemble this wall sconce very easy I then after that was all done I went ahead and painted everything with that chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree um, I painted the screws with chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree after that I go ahead and just assemble or attach the hardware um, this is real easy to assemble and then the length of the screws were a half an inch that I used. So an inch to a half an inch. The hardware, the screws actually had on hand because of I just keep hardware, especially when I throw something away, I take the hardware off of it. Now this hanger actually is something that I took off of um that I bought at Dollar Tree. So I had that as well. And here is how the wall sconce turned out. I really like it. Now look at that. My wall sconces are 15. Their wall sconce is $134.99. Now that's $120 savings on just the wall sconces. And I had the wood at home and then most of the other items were purchased from the Dollar Tree. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed making this. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what you see, I invite you to subscribe. And until the next time, have a good one. Bye.